Hey everyone, today we are going to discuss a rare but important clinical lesion that is craniopharyngioma. We are going to start with the case discussion and then we are going to progress with the final details. So what is craniopharyngioma? Let's start with the case discussion. A 23 year old man experienced headaches, polyuria and visual problems for the past three months. Physical examination shows he has a bilateral temporal visual field deficits. CT scan of the head shows a large, partially calcified cystic mass that occupies the cellular and supracellular areas. Live findings show a serum prolactin concentration of 60 nanogram per ml that is higher, and a serum sodium concentration again of 152 milligram equivalent per liter that is again higher. Serum calcium, phosphate, and glucose levels are normal. The mass is being excised and the histological examination shows a mixture of squamous epithelial elements, lipid rich debris, which contain cholesterol crystal. What is the likely diagnosis of this patient? So the diagnosis that was conferred is craniopharyngioma. The important key words are bilateral temporal visual field deficits. There is a cellular and supracellular mass. The biopsy shows a mass that is composed of mixture of squamous epithelial elements and lipid rich debris containing cholesterol crystals. So these are the important key things which we notice in this case. Let's discuss further and uh, we'll come to know how we reach to the con conclusion and the diagnosis of craniopharyngioma. Craniopharyngiomas are usually tumors of childhood being most frequently discovered between the ages of five to 20 years. So generally, it is a childhood tumor, but can occur in the adult as well, with the second peak being noticed around 25 years of age. It arises from remnant of Rathke's pouch, that is outpouching of pharyngeal roof. So this you should remember. Often you are asked this regarding the origin of craniopharyngioma, that is a vestigial remnant of pituitary gland, that is Rathke's pouch, from which this craniopharyngioma arises. Now the clinical pictures, the clinical pictures stem on the pressure effect that craniopharyngioma exerts on pituitary gland. So the pressure effects are headache, visual field def defects and hypopituitarism. So because of that, the hypopituitarism, there is a growth hormone deficiency and that can uh, lead to the growth retardation, a kind of a dwarfism is seen in the patients, the child. And the another possible feature that is commonly seen is compression of the pituitary stalk by the craniopharyngioma. So that leads to the loss of dopaminergic inhibition, dopamine which is secreted from the hypothalamus and which reaches the pituitary gland to inhibit the prolactin secretion. Now that uh, inhibition is gone, that inhibition is, that stalk is being compressed, hypothalamus pituitary stalk, that leads to the net result of hyperprolactinemia. Hyperprolactinemia is seen because of these factors. Hyperprolactinemia due to the loss of the dopaminergic inhibition that is the cause of hypopituitarism. Now let's come to the morphology of these craniopharyngiomas. Craniopharyngiomas average three to four centimeter diameter. They may be located in cellular and supracellular region. And they are of two different morphological types that is commonly being observed. That is admentinomatous type and the papillary type. Admentinomatous, admin, admentinomatous types, it reveals nest cord of squamous cells with peripheral palisading. So you can see the peripheral palisading. Palisading refers to a kind of a parallel arrangement of the cell. So there is a squamous epithelial cells, there is a peripheral palisading, and there is an aggregate of keratin material. If the aggregates of keratin material is seen over here, and uh, many of the cases they see, uh, they uh, exhibit a dystrophic calcification on that. The central core of the lesion shows some kind of a reticulum uh, cells. So a reticulum cells in the center and peripheral palisading at the periphery. And this is a nest of squamous epithelial cell and they, we, we get a kind of a wet keratin material, aggregate of keratin material is seen, lamellar form of keratin material is seen. So these are the key characteristic of admentinomatous type of craniopharyngioma. Papillary type of craniopharyngioma contains both solid sheets. So some areas here you can see the solid sheets, whereas here uh, in this uh, portion you can see the proper 
papillary type of appearance papillary arrangement of the uh, the tumor uh, aggregates are seen so it's a well its lining is by a well differentiated squamous epithelium and the squamous epithelium is arranged either as solid sheets or as papillae so these are the characteristic feature of papillary craniopharyngioma so adventinomatous type papillary type and it is worthwhile rem remembering that generally the reticulum cells and uh, the dystrophic calcification which is seen in the adventinomatous adventinomatous type and also the keratin that is seen in adventinomatous type is not very well seen in the papillary type here the papillary architecture is much more prominent over here now coming to the treatment and the prognosis the patients are potentially treated with surgery and sometimes radiation patients with craniopharyngioma if that is less than 5 cm in diameter they generally have an excellent prognosis and generally have a recurrence uh, free so there is not much recurrence even after the surgery but if it is more than 5 cm tumor they are more likely to be invasive to the surrounding structure so recurrence is more likely though there is not much difference overall in the prognosis but still there is a re high chances of re recurrence and the some cases which are uh, given which are given radiation therapy so malignant transformation is likely and malignant transformation into squamous cell carcinoma can be seen in many of the cases of craniopharyngioma so that's all for uh, this presentation so before we end let's have a quick uh, recap of what we learned craniopharyngiomas are cellular and supracellular tumors and uh, they are they are of two types that is adventinomatous type with an adventinomatous type of reticular reticulum cells and uh, with a reticulum uh, cells in the center and there is a per peripheral palisading arrangement wet keratin material there is a papillary type which exhibits a characteristic papillae and some solid uh, aggregates of squamous epithelial cells the craniopharyngiomas uh, typically cause the pressure symptoms they can cause hyperprolactinemia due to the loss of dopaminergic uh, inhibition and uh, the craniopharyngiomas are treated commonly with surgery and radiation and more than 5 or less than 5 that has a bearing on the recurrence rate so that's all for the this particular craniopharyngioma lesion see you all in the next video very soon please don't uh, forget to give your valuable feedback and also subscribe and like to the channel thank you all see you very soon bye bye for now